Hello, David Clark here from DVC Training. In this video, I'm going to look at the latest update to EDIUS BAT server. So my first couple of videos were an introduction. Now I'm going to look at some things that have changed since then and some new additions and a couple of things that you might want to put into your own BATs. So first of all, let me just open up the BAT server. And here you can see one of the new additions, which I'm going to talk about, which is a new way of deinterlacing. But it's changed a little bit since my first video. So there's now an advanced tab, which you can have a look through. There's a little bit of help here as well. The logs are still there. But the main things are simple things like you want to take this batch file here and edit it. You can just double click on it. It opens it up straight in Notepad and you can edit it. Save it. Bosh. Job done. Simple things like that that make your life easier. But a couple of things I wanted to dive a bit more into are this new thing, QTGMC, rolls off the tongue, and a couple of things that you can add into your own batch lists. So first, this one. This is a new thing that Mick brought out just before Christmas. You have to go to the Grass Valley forums, and it's under editing with Edius, and then a pre-release version of this thing, which he'll add in at some point. But this is just an extra thing for you to play with. And it's literally a way of upscaling and deinterlacing your videos, which is slightly different to the other versions. Now it's using this thing called QTGMC, which I actually did mention in some videos a couple of years ago as a, a free way of deinterlacing that I think better than all the others that I've tried. This includes going off to Topaz and using that deinterlacing. I think this probably does my favorite deinterlacing. Other people haven't agreed. So we're getting to the stage when I'm looking at like comparing QTMDC with Yadif of they both do very good jobs and which one you prefer might depend on your own personal preference of what the video looks like afterwards. Personally, I prefer this one because I think it does a better job of getting rid of jaggy. For example, the example he puts on here is this picture here with huge amounts of jaggies. That's what Edius would do. This is what QTMDC does. He's also put in it the fact that it will upscale the video. So it will deinterlace it and upscale it. Effectively, it's going to take a DV clip and make it the height of high definition. So you'll still have black bars down the side, but it'll make it the right height for high definition. Like I say, it will be put into Bat Server pretty soon. But I mean, he uploaded this on what, the 25th of December? So a little Christmas present for anybody to play with. To be honest, I didn't really play with it much over Christmas. I had family stuff. But what you have to do is you just have to download these two things here. It's a new version of the Setup Manager and a thing which adds in QTMGC. And they're both executables. You might find when you try and download it that it works. Or you might find that your computer says, um, hang on, this is an executable. Do you really want to download it? So you'll have to say yes. But then you'll just get those, run those, and it'll add it in. And by the way, when you're running these, you don't need to even close down Edius. You can do that when Edius is open, and they'll be available as soon as it's been installed. But anyway, once you've got it, then you'll have the ability to add in this. So let me delete that. Come up to Create New Edius Entry, and there you can see you have got Add In Advanced Deinterlacing with this. Just like the others, you select it. You decide which preset that you want to go for. The actual settings in QTMGC are medium, fast, slow, and the slower it does it, the better the quality. The faster it does it, the lower the quality. Medium, to be honest, I do most of my stuff on medium unless I'm being very anal. I would probably go for that one because it's not the fastest thing in the world. And I'm going to take that, go OK. What do you want to convert it into? Now, just the same as previously, I would go for ProRes. ProRes is a very uncompressed format. I want to re-edit this stuff. I want to take it and then use it in my edit and then do something else with it. And if you're doing that, it's better to keep it as uncompressed as possible. And that's why I use ProRes as, as opposed to MPEG-2 or MPEG-4. If I literally wanted to take a clip and just make an MP4 out of it to say upload to YouTube, I'd probably use that one, but I'll go for this. Do you want to use the whole clip or a trimmed version? Generally, I go for a trimmed version because generally what I do is I find the bit I want, shove it on the timeline and then use this thing on it. And do you want it in the bin or the timeline? I'm going to say timeline. Again, you could use the bin, but I'm saying timeline. Save it with a name. And inside of Edius, I can stick a clip onto the timeline and I can use that on it. So, so far, it's pretty much the same as it was with adding anything else into the bat server. I've selected this clip again, which I've used a lot to show off deinterlacing because it shows all these jaggies on the diagonals. Let's put that full screen. You can see this is what Edius is doing. And to try and show this off, I've actually come into a 50p project. So this is basically as good as Edius is going to get. It does a worse job in a 25p project. But you look at that. Yeah, those 
lines there, those diagonal lines, are pretty naff. I mean, the face isn't that great either. This is Hi8 Original. It's naff in the first place, but still, that's pretty ugly. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to try and use QTMGC to change it for me. With the bat server, you have to save it first. If you're doing it on the timeline, you have to save it. Go to this, right click, deinterlace, QTMGC to ProRes, Bosch, let it get on with it. And there it goes, it is now doing the processing. So, what are the results like? My original clip is about an hour long. This bit I'm using on the timeline is only a few seconds. Actually, it takes quite a long time when I'm making that up off the timeline to make the final clip. Something like a three second clip seems to be taking four, five, six minutes, and I'm on a pretty good computer here. This is a 14th generation system with 32 gig of RAM and a decent graphics card. I did notice that if I actually trimmed the clips first, so that would be just using the old clip cut that I've actually got here. If I use clip cut first and then I deinterlace the clips, it was a lot quicker. Maybe that will get better in a future version. So this is the first release of something which is still technically beta. But anyway, what about the results? Here I've got the original and the one that has been done with the QTMCC preset without any changes to the preset. As you can see, it's twice the size and just shove it onto the timeline. Obviously it becomes a little box in the middle, but if I swap between the two, so let's just turn it on and off. Now looking at that little window up there, you can see a difference as I do it. If I pop this up full screen, you can see there is quite a considerable difference there between the original DV clip on the timeline and the one that's been done with QTMGC. The main thing is looking at all these jaggy areas, everything around all these lines, they're hugely jaggy, goes away and becomes pretty smooth. It's still standard def high eight that's been upscaled, but it's got a lot, lot better. We do have the other options that were already in there for deinterlacing. So can use Yadif and all the other things. Personally, I prefer QTMGC as doing the best job. Of course, the other thing that then comes to mind is, okay, so I've got this clip, but really I want to widescreen it. I mean, all my high def stuff is widescreen, so I want to widescreen it. So having a look at that, I'd actually have to go in there and then change the scale with the layouter so it fits into the widescreen picture. And with my high eight stuff, that means I have to zoom it in and then move it over a bit because there's slightly more black on one side than the other. And there we are, I've now got an upscaled version. Of course, I have to chop stuff off if I'm doing this. I'm taking a square picture and I'm shoving it into a rectangular image. So obviously something's got to go. And I'm asked about this a lot. How do I upscale that picture? So it is seeing the whole thing, but it fits a rectangular box. I mean, you can't, you have to chop something off. It's a square picture going into a rectangle. You've got to chop something off. That's why I put the layouter on here and then I'll scale it up and then I'll come around here and move the position around a bit. So it's framed nicely. Like I'd like to see the whole of this guy as opposed to losing his hands if I just use the middle. There is AI stuff coming along that will fill out the edges. I mean, it's already in After Effects and it's variable as to how well that works depending on the shot. But of course there's AI stuff. We might be able to take a widescreen shot and fill out the edges nicely sometime in the future. I haven't found anything yet that does that really well. I have filled out edges not using AI and using Photoshop and stuff like that, but maybe I'll do another video about that some other time. So here I've used the bat server to make the deinterlace version and scale it by two, but wouldn't it make more sense to scale it by a bit more than two? Actually, you can do that, but you have to start fiddling with the batch files. So I'm going to talk a little bit now about changing batch files. First, I'm going to look at changing batch files in a much more basic way. And then in a second video, I'll look at this new deinterlacing and adapting it so that we can change the size and the frame rate. I just split it up into two because the video went on quite a long time. So I thought it made more sense to split it up into two and look at the more complicated things a bit more in depth. So anyway, let's do some basic batch editing. One of the things I asked was, I like this clip cut option here. But the only problem is that a clip is not made up of complete frames like iframes and it's an mp4 file it has to cut it at the iframe and they're not where you actually plot the endpoint they're the closest point to the endpoint and i wanted to add a few handles i wanted to take something where i could just take it and then add on a couple of seconds on either side so mick said i could do this i could take a batch file so let's double click on it and then i could add in this so take extend in out, I'll write this in the comments, take extend in out. So I just double click on it to open up the batch file and I can add in this extend in out. 
This one, extend in out, adds something on the end, and how much it adds is the number of seconds. So if I take that with the colons, put it in there, and add on, extend in out one, it'll stick one second on the front, or one second on the back, or I could do that and stick two seconds on the front, or I could do one and a half, or whatever. But that just adds extra handles to the clip. Now, if I am trimming something on the timeline, I like to add in a little bit of wiggle room so that I can slightly change the edit if I want to. So I like handles. Great, I can now do it. I can put this on my batch file and it will take that clip and add in some extra handles. Now, as you might have seen, I'd made a clip cut with handles which had extend in out too. So let me try this on that clip on the timeline. I'm going to take this, which is a DV clip. So it's a clip that has got whole frames all the way through. Right click, cut with handles. Off it goes and makes it. And now you can see that it's actually added two seconds on each side of the clip. You do also have this option here, put in a negative number, minus two there, so extend in out minus two means take two seconds off the in out of the clip. I can't think why I'd ever want to reduce the clips by a certain amount, but you can put in a negative number. I was trying to do this and I failed, so Mick did this. I was trying to adjust the more complicated part of the batch file, he had to put this in actually as part of the batch server. The way I was doing it wouldn't work sometimes. If you had the whole clip on the timeline, you can't add handles and it would just mess it up. This works if you've got no extra space, it won't add it. If you've got extra space, it will add it. So that's jolly useful, I think, just adding handles into anything. So it only obviously works on trimmed clips. It wouldn't work if you're using the entire clip. And you might even notice here I put one in the bin as well as one on the timeline. The other thing which he told me is I wanted to specify where these things are going. And he said, you can stuck that in, target path. So as a default, what happens is whenever Bat server does something, it just puts it next to the original clip. I wanted to say, no, I want to take all of the stuff that I'm doing on the timeline here, and I want to put that in a specific folder. You can add that in. So if I take target path, go to me clip cut with handles, shove it in. Now at the moment, I haven't told it where to go. So I'm going to have to choose a folder. So for example, on my D drive, I have a test folder and I'm gonna make up a new folder, call it something. And I want everything to go there. So I would have to type in D colon, blah, blah, blah. Actually, I find the easiest way, especially Windows 11, click on it, copy, paste by far easier than having to type all that stuff because if you get anything slightly wrong it, you know windows won't put it in the right place but now i've done that it's going to put in whatever clip i do into that folder so save it come back in here let me put another couple of clips on the timeline make sure i save the project then do clip cut with handles and those clips will go into the folder and i can change this every job so having done those i want them to go somewhere else i'll just have the bat server open change that and the next lot will go somewhere else and you can keep coming in and changing your bat entries whilst edius is open you don't have to close edius bloody blah, blah, blah just bring up the bat server change something it'll do the new thing for the next job but those i find very useful options that we've now got in the bat server Another thing worth mentioning, I did mention it in my very first bat server video, there is a limit to the number of bats you can have in here and you can only have 15. Because I've been adding on all these extra presets, I got this message, it's basically saying you can't have more than 15 mush. Now of course I didn't need it because I'd added in two versions of my no resize for example, so I'd have to get rid of that one. Absolute doddle of course, bong delete bat. Or if I wanted to keep it maybe, but use it for another time, well I could have just disabled it. Or I could right click on it and say open folder and it gets me to all the bat files. I've got all these QTM GCs, maybe I don't want them anymore. I want to clear it out for a particular job, but I could just cut them and then store them somewhere. Now they're no longer in the list. Yeah, come into here, right click, they've gone. Again, Edius was on all that time. And then when I want them, well, I could just go get them, copy them, Let's see, I want to put them in there. So let's open that folder, paste them into that. Bosh, they're back. So there's a limitation of 15, but you can just move them in and move them out whilst Edius is going. Especially with all this testing I've been done with all this deinterlacing and everything. I've been keeping this whole back panel open, just double clicking on them and shoving in a new target path. because so I know exactly where they're going. Of course I can move them afterwards, but it's uh, quite nice to just pop in here, new target path, come back, right click. I find that very easy. The fact that I don't have to close anything down, pop back and forwards, I can fiddle around as much as I like. 
So this video has been running on quite a long time already. So what I'm going to do is I shall end this video here and then I'll do a second video where I look a bit more in depth at fiddling with the batch files. Particularly, I want to look at changing this QTM GC thing so I can do different variations. At the moment, it just does two times scaling and changes stuff to 50p. I want to do stuff where I change it to 25p and I also want to do different sizes because I'd like it to be a bit bigger. So in my second video, I'm going to go a bit more in depth to that, which gets into a bit more fiddling with batch files and what's called AVI synth files. The good thing being most of the hard work's already been done by Mix. So if you want to fiddle, you can just adjust stuff and see what happens. But Mix done all the hard work in the first place of getting all the basics working. So anyway, please like and subscribe this video. Visit the website www.dvctraining.co.uk for more information on EDIUS and my training and so on. And of course, to order EDIUS 11 upgrades or to come to me for support. If you have problems setting up that server on your EDIUS 11, I can do remote control sessions to help you sort stuff out. But pop onto the website to learn more about that. And I'll see you in the next video.